Hey folks, I uh, thought today we could have a look at flood hydrographs. Now these can sometimes put people off um, because it's a graph and it's geography, not maths, but geography as we know has some maths in it and uh, flood hydrographs is one of those sections. It also has quite a long name which I know can sometimes put people off, but remember hydro just means water, so it's flood water graphs if you like. Um, and what they do, uh, and I'm going to put this in red because it's really important, is they plot, or we're going to do it together, they plot on a graph, it is a plot of river discharge after a storm. Now dis discharge just means what the river is discharging, so how much water is coming down the river. Um, and what we'll do, just to make sure we're really clear there, uh, when we're talking about after the storm, um, we're talking about the time. And that is sometimes measured in hours, depending on the graph you're given, and it is sometimes measured in days. And then with the discharge, I know I just mentioned it's what comes down the river, but that is actually quite formally measured in metres cubed per second. So, flood hydrographs. I think the best thing we can do is just draw one and I'll talk you through it and you draw one as well and then afterwards you'll feel so much more confident with these. So they have an axis down here. I'll try and draw my best straight line. Um, and then another one along here. And then another one down here. Don't need a ruler, you can just do it very slowly and carefully. <laughs> Okay, let's label our axes first. So on this side, we're going to have rainfall, and that's measured in millimeters. On this side, we're gonna have time, or at the bottom rather. And remember that's hours or days, depends on the graph you're given. And then on this side, this is where we measure the discharge, so how much water is coming out of the river. So just write discharge and that is in meters cubed per second okay now the base flow of the river I'm just going to put that in first let's pop it there and we're going to label that base flow this is what the river does under normal circumstances the so normal amounts of rain it's steady there's not too much water being pushed out um, there's no flood event now we know that there's been a storm, so this is going to look a bit different now. And what happens if you watch me first and then copy yourself, is you get something a bit like this. Okay, now the rainfall, I'm going to draw the bars, it's a bit like a climate graph. There we go, so we've got our rainfall, our bars, often the rainfall will happen for how many, let's say let's say a day, that's a lot, but you know, a whole day of rainfall, a whole night of rainfall. Um, there is a lag time between the highest point of rainfall, if I take it over here, and the highest uh, discharge, remember we're measuring discharge from the river. Now that is called the lag time, okay? And the lag time here, I haven't got the exact measurements on here, but we could say it's two days, three days. And remember that the reason for that is water takes time to get to the river. It might be caught in trees, it might be soaked up in the ground, it could be, it could be many reasons why it's not exactly there yet. Okay, next up we need to label our uh, peak discharge. So that's like the biggest flow of the river. If this was a real flood event, that's where buildings would be being flooded, bridges would be destroyed, the river is running fast and high and flooding the surrounding area. And then you can see it, it drops back down slower. So it rises quicker and drops back down slower. Now this one is called the rising limb. Limb is like a limb in your body, I'm not sure why they use that term but that's what it is. The rising limb. And then this one is known as the falling limb. 
Now, this shape can be very different depending on how big the flood event is, like how much um, rainfall has come over how much time. So if it's a flash flood, you'd expect to see a really big peak and then immediate drop. Whereas if it was like prolonged rainfall, then it would be more steady. But basically this line is showing you the volume of flow along the river. That's the volume of water, or we call that the flow, along the river. Okay, so that's measured in, in peak discharge. Okay, we've got our rainfall measurement over here, we've got our base flow. We're doing really well. This is essentially what a flood hydrograph looks like. Now, we've just got to remember about the lag time and the base flow. So let's put those over here, so our big keywords. So lag time, which remember changes, depending on um, if you've had a flash flood where a lot of rainfalls happened very quickly uh, versus a more prolonged rainfall event. And we've got our base flow. So lag time is the time between the peak rainfall, notice it here, lag time, and the peak discharge. That's also the time that people have to evacuate and to get sandbags and to really respond and, and, and react to what's going on with the weather. And then the base flow, look how low the base flow is. Um, the base flow is the normal flow of the river. I know mine is quite exaggerated, but um, that can happen to rivers. This is the normal flow of the river. Now you would be expected in an AQA um, GCSE geography exam to, to discuss the rising limb, the falling limb, and obviously mine doesn't have um, exact measurements on it, uh, nor does yours, but you would be expected to use that data as well, and certainly to talk about that lag time versus, um, and peak discharge versus the base flow. So I hope that's helpful. Quick, um, quick vid there on flood hydrographs.